my privilege to serve as president of the board. At this time, uh, Mr. Uh, Irons will lead our invocation and our Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Mr. Husbands. If you would please stand. Let us pray. We thank you for this wonderful day and for new opportunities we have for success. We thank you for a new school year that is about to begin. Be with our students, teachers, parents, administrators, and this board of trustees. Allow us to continue teaching, motivating, and inspiring our students to meet and even exceed all the educational goals that have been placed before them, whereby our entire district will someday attain the level of exemplary. Lead and guide this board to make judicious decisions that benefit our students and our entire district. As I close, we thank you for blessing Dr. Mel Brown to have a successful open heart surgery. We are happy to have him back with us. Amen. Amen. Please join me in pledging our nation's flag. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And our state flag. Honor of the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one, one and indivisible. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Irons, and thank you, Mr. Husband. Um, I want to take just a minute to uh, welcome Dr. Mel Brown back as well. Uh, you'll notice he has not missed a meeting. He had his surgery uh, a little over two weeks ago and uh, is here with us, and so we are very glad. And he has asked if he could have a couple of minutes, and I will be glad to. Well, first of all, I want to address a rumor. Uh, it was bypass surgery and not a heart implant. Uh, <laughs> and uh, then the second thing, I would like to uh, say thank you to the board and to the uh, administration and all the staff for all the cards, letters, and the visits and uh, that uh, came my way uh, while I was kind of uh, laid up a little bit. And then uh, probably the most unusual card I got while I was in the uh, hospital was this one, which was given to me by uh, C.J. Uh, Haynes and uh, Dr. Ann Smatter, and I want you to know I have it in writing now. I get better every day. So, <laughs> <laughs> but th thank you all. I mean, it was, I couldn't ask for more support than I had. <clears throat> we are very glad that you are here tonight. Um, we're going to move now to awards and recognition, and the first one is the Woodlands High School Class 5A Lone Star Cup winner. I will introduce uh, the principal of the Woodlands High School, Mr. Greg Colshan, to uh, introduce our special guests in our award. Mrs. Sasser, Dr. Stockton, members of the board, it's an honor to be here tonight to recognize uh, the Woodlands High School for winning the 2008 Lone Star Cup Championship. As you know, the Lone Star Cup Championship is sponsored by the UIL and awards points for academic, fine art, uh, performing art, and academic successes. Uh, this is the second time in the last three years we've been honored to receive this award, and it is a total school effort, community effort that allows this to happen. Um, we want to thank you as a board for supporting the extracurricular activities that our students participate in in such a fine fashion. We'd also like to recognize our parents and members of our community who do an outstanding job of supporting all of our extracurricular programs. At this time, I'd like to introduce our athletic coordinator and head football coach, Mark Schmid, who will introduce our coaches who are with us tonight. Thank you for having us. Uh, thank you for allowing us to do the things that we love to do the most, and that's uh, work with kids. I uh, have a great group of uh, uh, men and women here tonight, and I'd like to introduce uh, our first uh, gentleman is Kent Kirshner, our head swimming coach. Dale Reed, our head basketball coach. Reef Murhai, our head tennis coach. 
Steve Kerberi, golf coach. Joaquin Batista, wrestling. Noel Hansen, girls track and cross country. Richard Jorgensen, softball. Ron Eastman, baseball. Hans Kleinschmidt, boys soccer. Dana Bruton, girls basketball. Dina Graves, girls soccer. Thank you. We are extremely proud to represent the Conroe Independent School District as the uh, Lone Star Cup champions. Thank you. Um, on behalf of the um, CISD School Board, as well as uh, Dr. Stockton and administrators, it's a great pleasure to stand before you this evening. And I think what's incredible, too, for us to realize that uh, the, they received a total of 143 points. Uh, the second was 99.5, and, and so that speaks uh, very highly of all of you uh, this evening and, and the young people that uh, you um, brought to this level. Uh, the other is not only were the sports incredible, but also swimming and diving, soccer, and track and field uh, were recognized uh, as uh, sports that went above and beyond. And some of you may have seen in um, July, the Chronicle had an article in the paper that said uh, their cup runneth over that recognizes uh, the uh, quality of not only athletic, but also uh, academic championships um, at the Woodlands High School. And with that, the Conroe Independent School District recognizes the Woodlands High School recipient of the 2008 UIL Lone Star Cup, August 19, 2008. Congratulations. And I think uh, the board would like to uh, applaud and shake each one of your hands if we could um, turn around with, and start with Dr. Stockton or start uh, yeah, with Mr. Don't cut me. Congratulations. 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 Congratulations, sir. Congratulations, sir. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. He helped Helen, even though she did not have COVID. We have another uh, special group that we would like to recognize this evening, and that is the 2008 Facilities Planning Committee. It's my pleasure at this time to recognize Dr. Jean Stewart, who is going to introduce our uh, special recipients tonight. Dr. Stewart. Thank you, President Sasser, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. It is just a distinct honor this evening to be able to present to you the uh, 2008 Facilities Planning Committee for the Conroe Independent School District. Um, as you know, there's 15 members from our community that were selected to represent all the attendance zones of our district, and they began their service back in October of 2007 and worked diligently for the next uh, three to four months in their work which involved the analysis of our demographic information, the physical assessment of all of our district's facilities, and a detailed analysis of the projected enrollment growth. All of their work was focused on bringing to you the conclusions and recommendations of their work, and they were presented on January 15th and were followed by the successful passage of the 2008 bond referendum. The members of this committee were dedicated to their responsibilities and unselfishly gave of their time to our district and our district's children. At this time, we would like to introduce each one of them and present to them a symbol of our appreciation for their dedication to our district. I just want to say um, a word of thanks also on behalf of the board. Uh, we know the number of hours and the time commitment this was and um, the, the mounds of information uh, that you went through. And um, I hope that you will be very pleased as 
uh, the construction comes along and you see all of the projects that you brought forward to us. So thank you so much for um, giving of your time and service to the children of our district. Yes. At this time, as I call your name, if you'd come forward, uh, Laura Davis is here, Andy Dill, Brian Fowler, Doris Goldman, John Hennigan, Mary Lee John, Kirk, John. and I believe that Nelda Blair had up. Joe Michaels, <laughs> Eddie Mize, Ryan O'Shaughnessy, David Reed, Marilyn Shannon, <laughs> and Store. Brett Strong, Alan Struble, and George Wagner. I believe that uh, Mr. Michaels is going to say a few words on behalf of the committee. Dr. Stewart, uh, Ms. Sasser, and all aboard, we just thank you for the opportunity to have uh, volunteered our time and our efforts. As Dan Cox showed us earlier tonight, one of the truly fulfilling aspects of being a volunteer for the Conroe Independent School District is the wise and uh, very fine use of the funds that we propose to be spent is done. Uh, we saw that we got a complete school being built from your wise choices and good use of funds. And in addition to all the work that was done by this committee in determining what the needs were and coming up with a proposed funding for the bond, a second committee, which was known as Parents Advocating Stellar Schools, was formed. Most all of the members of the Facility Planning Committee were also members of that committee, the PASS PASS Committee. This committee promoted the bond that was ultimately passed by the voters of our district. And in the process of raising funds to promote the bond, we raised more than it took. And as a result of that, the committee tonight would like to present to the Conroe Independent School District Education Foundation, which we know and understand is a separate entity and a separate organization from CISD, but we'd like to present them a check of the unused funds in excess of $9,000 be used for scholarships by the CISD Education Foundation. And uh, I'd like to particularly thank Nelda Blair, who is a, uh, <laughs> a seminal force in the uh, CISD Education Foundation. Nell, thank you for putting that together and your leadership in that. And it's our pleasure to be able to help support that program as it goes forward. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
The next portion of our agenda is set aside for citizen participation. Madam Secretary, has anyone signed up to speak? No, they haven't. We'll move on to um, the consent agenda, which is item three, um, a rather lengthy consent agenda this time, but you've had it for um, several days now. Uh, any comments or questions on the consent agenda? Move the approval. Second. We have a, mo a motion and a second that we approve the consent agenda. All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay. Um, <clears throat> item four on our agenda, curriculum and instruction, Dr. Dawson. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Gibson and Ms. Drummond here to present the summer school report. Uh, we've had a busy summer and I think you'll, you'll be excited about the results we've had. Good evening, Mrs. Sasser, board members, Dr. Stockton, uh, Mrs. Drummond, and I would like to share with you some highlights from our summer programs. We had a very busy summer, and of course, in the educational world, with our teachers coming back yesterday, summer is over. Uh, we had several programs that our students enjoyed. Uh, one was a SMART program. This program is offered to first graders, first through sixth grade. Uh, this is a, um, a voluntary program. This program is designed to um, accelerate the skill development of our students in the areas of reading, writing, and mathematics. This was held at Oak Ridge Elementary, and our summer school principal was Tammy Eldridge. I'd like to mention that in our, in our summer school programs, our assistant principals have the opportunity to be summer school principals, and this gives them um, opportunities to highlight and showcase their leadership skills. 102 students attended uh, from grades one through six. We had our Title I program, again, serviced first through sixth grade. The purpose of the Title I program is to strengthen the ac academic skills in the areas of reading, writing, math, and science. We had four campuses that served our students. Uh, we served approximately 503 students at four different campuses, and our summer school principals were Amy Busby, Tammy Eldridge, Jamie Bone, and Carolyn King. We ha held our bilingual program for pre-K, K, and first, and our, our bilingual summer school program is actually mandated by federal law for pre-K and K, and we extend that program to our first graders. We had a record-breaking 690 students attend at four different campuses. We introduced this program this year as a pilot program. Uh, this program was designed, the Academic Intervention Model, or AIM, was designed for our third, fourth, fifth, or sixth graders. This program was designed for students that, that passed the tax assessment but they may not have made their 70% uh, passing uh, in order to be promoted to the next grade level. Uh, we designed this so that we could come in and uh, work with those students. Um, it was voluntary on the parents' part. It was tuition-based. Uh, 13 students came and 13 students were promoted to the next grade level. Uh, we, it was a very successful pilot and we hope to extend this uh, next <laughs> summer. We had our customary camp tax program, which is a very intensive reading and math intervention program for our third and fifth grade students who have to take the tax test for the third administration. Uh, we had 46 third grade reading students that attended, 144 fifth grade math students, and 155 fifth grade reading students, and the program was held at three different campuses. Here we have the results of the third administration only uh, in third and fifth grade. And I do want to take a moment to just give you some uh, background information because this was a transitional year. The, we introduced this year a test called the Tax Accommodated. And this test took the place of the former SDAA, which was the State Developed Alternative Assessment. 
Both of these tests are designed for our special education students. The tax accommodated is an on-level grade test and our special education students took this test. Uh, many of them had not ever taken a tax test before. The tax accommodated test has the same level of difficulty as the tax test. Uh, it, has, it does not have any field questions. It has more white space on it, and it has a, lar uh, and, and it has a larger font. So um, in fifth grade, tax accommodated is counted in our science grades. In grades three, five, and three, uh, third and fifth grade reading, it is not counted this year, but it will be in 2010. So we view this year as a baseline year. Uh, you can see in 2008, in third grade, we tested 47 students, and approximately 40% met the standard. In fifth grade reading, we tested 156 students, the third administration, and approximately 28% met the standard. And in 2008, we tested 143 students, and a 30% and, uh, and met the standard. The other point I'd like to make is that our goal is to have 100% of our students meet the standard. And our goal is for that to happen the first time, the first time we give the tax test. Uh, that is when our students are, are the most successful. Um, so as each time, as this test is administered uh, for the students, we have to, um, we have in very intense interventions that, that, are, that are put in place. So um, we feel very, very positive about the results. Uh, we continue in our curriculum areas to um, support our students and uh, to find all the um, instructional strategies that will meet their needs. So overall, what this looks like for our tax first, second, and third administration, but if you remember that our accountability system is um, rated after the second administration, we have our, if we count all three in 2008, we have a 97%. Um, we, in fifth grade reading, we have a 95%, and in fifth grade mathematics, we have a 95%. So. We, we feel these, these scores are, are very strong, and um, we will continue to um, work towards 100% mastery. How many more kids did we test this year? We tested this year in third grade reading. We tested over 500, 535 students. In uh, fifth grade uh, reading, we tested 331 additional students. And in fifth grade math, we tested about 330 more students. So we are testing more students and uh, maintaining, as you can see, uh, a very comparable success rate. On the, uh, what do you call it? The tax accommodative. accommodative. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, big words throw me. Uh, the tax, tax accommodative. I noticed that in 97, it seemed like it jumped way up from the previous year, but then kind of came back down. Uh, have we looked at that to see what uh, what we did in '97 that worked so well? That one one more back, I think. This is this this is the slide. The 97 percent? No, no, on back. There's a where it had 47 on. The, yeah, right right here. Yeah. See, it was 38, 47, 30 on the fifth grade, and 31, 45, 28 on mm -hmm. reading. And I just wonder. We seem to have done something really good. In 2007, I wondered if we've tried to isolate what that is. Well, now, Mel, there's Dr. Brown. There, um, in 2007, we actually 2008 we tested, we retested, or that students taking that third administration was less. It's 156 students versus 194. And in 2008, we're testing more students overall. We're testing included tax accommodated students, and also in fifth grade, a large number of our students were taking the tax test in English for the first time. So there's a number of variables that play into that, but I can tell you percentage-wise that the largest number passed the first time. The second time, we're getting between 40 and 50% passing rate, and the third time, we're getting between 20 and 40% passing rate. So, you know, we are working diligently to raise that. Oh, I, I'm not, uh, I just, I mean, it just sort of, just, like, look like there was a 
a peak there and that yeah. we did something much better that year and I was kind of wondering. I think the answer to your question, um, you can you can see our summer school offerings have increased over the last couple of years because we're looking at different different things to do to try to address the different needs of the children. So we do analyze that and uh, we use the Nova software and we use different programs during the summer. I think that's a, a good point. I think overall, I think Dr. Gibson makes a good point too that there's some other factors in here, uh, but this is a really good story. Uh, but yes, how can we, how can yeah. we even continue to get better? We had one more program, the extended school year services, and this is for our special education students. It is uh, students are invited based on their ARD by the ARD committee, and we had two sessions, and this was held at Reeves Elementary. Uh, this was our, this is a summary of our expenditures for our summer school programs. Uh, we use all of our funding sources, federal, state, and local, and um, our expenditures were $931,867. And we did, we actually had 145 additional students that attended summer school this year uh, from last year this time. Uh, they were served by 212 teachers and eight administrators. Good evening, Mrs. Sasser, Dr. Stockton, members of the board. We're very excited about our summer school program for secondary. We had a variety of locations. This year, our district summer school for high school and junior high was held at Oak Ridge High School. We kind of share the wealth each summer, each summer and determine which high school will host um, the district summer school for our students who, uh, for the most part, go to school at the Woodlands High School, the Woodlands College Park in Oak Ridge, but we also have students from Caney Creek, Conroe High, and Hawk attend this uh, high school program. We had uh, principals Pam Grabsky and Nikki Watts at Oak Ridge. At Conroe High School, John Williams was our assistant principal. Pete Junior High, Ronnie Eichenberg served as the principal. At Caney Creek in Moorhead, our principal was Jeff Stickler. Robert Durheim was the principal for summer school at Washington Junior High. And Dr. Steve Meeker helped us at the Juvenile Detention Center this summer. We also had Hawk Alternative High School. JJ AEP, last summer, our students that, that are in JJ AEP actually joined us at our district summer school. This summer, the county asked us, it, they said they had some money, would we mind if they hosted their own program? And we, of course, said, by all means, please do. So that worked out very well. Ms. Drummond, yes. uh, before you move forward, then yes. what is the difference between uh, Conroe High School and Oak Ridge? If all well, Conroe High, High School typically will do their Plato program, they call it Choose, and it's an intense credit recovery program. They also ran a tax academy there for math for their uh, juniors and seniors. The types of programs that we had, um, you can kind of tell by this slide. Uh, we did have rec credit recovery courses at Oak Ridge. We ran our tax academy for 7th and 8th graders who needed to take the tax test for the third time. Um, we ran that at Pete, Washington, Moorhead, and at Oak Ridge. Uh, GED was at Hawk and at JDC. We had an ESL Institute uh, for our newcomer students at Oak Ridge High School, Conroe High, and Caney Creek. Uh, we did have our academic preparation program at JJAEP. Plato was actually offered at four of our high school campuses this summer, so students could make that choice. Um, at whether they went to Conroe High, Oak Ridge, Caney Creek, or College Park. Our extended program, uh, extended services program was at Oak Ridge for secondary. High school accelerated courses were at Oak Ridge High School. Math acceleration for incoming seventh and eighth graders was at Oak Ridge High School. Those two classes are pre-algebra for incoming seventh graders, which would put them one year ahead in math and Algebra 1 for, wait a minute, I get, let me start over with that. Incoming 8th graders took pre-algebra, incoming 7th graders took 7th grade math so they could go into 8th grade math, okay? 
Science Tax Academy for 11th and 12th graders was at Pete, and I have some good news for you about that in just a little bit. These are our first time credit offerings. These, our students take courses uh, in half credit increments. So we had 730.5 course offerings, or courses taken. And you can see the courses that were offered. Some of them are two semester, some are one semester courses. We had 34 students in Algebra 1. We had 12 students in Pre-Cal, Pre-AP. This is the first year that we've actually made that course. We also had 12 students in Spanish 2, which is the first year that we've made the course. And we had 32 students in our dual credit U.S. history, just so that you know um, what the interest is. And the interest is definitely growing. The summary, 2,716 students attended secondary summer school programs. We had 1,242 students attend the main program, and as you can see through the list, the numbers of students that were at each of our different campuses. Approximately 96% of the high school courses taken were completed successfully. Again, 730.5 initial high school credits were earned. 973 junior high students attended Tax Academy, but they weren't all in one place. Transportation was provided from regional hubs at elementary, intermediate, and junior high campuses. These are our tax results. Again, as, as Dr. Gibson explained, this is a benchmark year for us, the first year for our eighth graders to be able to take their test for three times. These are the results from our third test administration. Eighth graders taking the reading test, the number was 66, with 20% of those students meeting the standard. For math, we had 271 students taking the test with 26% of those students meeting the standard. These are our tax results for eighth grade. And needless to say, we are delighted. Um, it is the first year that we have the exemplary score in math for eighth grade students. So we are very pleased, feel like everyone has worked very, very hard. Summer exit tax results are uh, Students who have taken the tax test and not met the standard have an opportunity in the summer to take the test again. We had 83 students out of 130 students meet the standard for a 64%. In math, we had 89 students out of 281 who took the test for 32%. 119 students met the standard out of 306 in science at 39%, and 34 students out of 83 for 41% in social studies. I want to brag on our Science Tax Academy that we held at Pete Junior High, Cheryl Heim. Our science coordinator has been instrumental in helping get this started. This is the second year. We had 69 students attend. 32 of those students met the standard from going into that program, so that was a 46% passing rate. Uh, we're very pleased with that. Of the students who didn't meet the standard, 65% of those students increased their score by 33 points on average. So very, very good. And if you will remember, I think I told you at a previous board meeting that this year at this science academy, if the students needed a credit recovery, half credit in science, if they met the attendance requirement to go to the tax academy and they passed the test, the schools would award them that half credit in science. And we had 12 students who actually earned a half credit of science this summer as well. So um, kudos to Cheryl Heim and the teachers who have put this program together. And we're actually uh, talking to Cindy Sellers to try to have a program for math next summer. Financial summary, $386,687 was paid in salaries, supplies, printing, and materials. We collected $268,926.50 in tuition. Our staffing summary, as you can see, we had a good number of people working in our summer programs. We had 2,716 secondary students in seven locations with 176 staff members. 
We had 863 more students this summer than we did last year. We attribute that to our student success initiative in eighth grade, of course, but also four by four curriculum requirements are causing our students to know that they have opportunities in the summer to take courses for initial credit, and that's becoming more and more popular. So um, very, very pleased, think it was a great success. We actually had, I think Dr. Hines told me over 4,000 total students with elementary and secondary in our summer school program. Thank you, Dr. Gibson and Ms. Drummond. Um, it goes without saying, I think it's been a very busy summer in CISD. And um, our thanks to all those um, administrators and staff and teachers and, um, and to the students who took advantage of those programs. So we appreciate that. Uh, we're going to move on to um, I know. item 5A, Dr. Stockton, the naming of the music building. Uh, 5A is the naming of the music building at Conroe High School. I want us Dr. Stewart to come forth and bring that item. This evening, uh, I'm, it, I'm very pleased to be able to present to you this item. The, the uh, Conroe High School site-based decision-making team has made a recommendation to the district level planning and decision-making committee, and that recommendation was that their new music building be named after Ralph Rowe. Uh, Mr. Rowe was the... Um, band director at Conroe High School for over 20, I think for 20 years, and um, was just an incredible director, quite an inspiration to the students at that at that uh, school, and set a lot of traditions that are still there at the school, and made that that band the, uh, the program that it is today. So there's a lot of, of community support for this. So in their recommendation to the district level, we met in July, and it was unanimously approved. Uh, to bring forward that recommendation to you as uh, the Board of Trustees to make that decision. And I think that Mr. Burns has a mock-up of what that would has it look on. like. It's on. It's already on. See that? Isn't it beautiful? So that would be what it would look I like if, uh, if that were your decision. Uh, this evening, this is, uh, um, is for your information. So I'd like uh -huh. to add, you may have seen in the newspaper that uh, the entire Conroe High Band made a trip over to Mr. Rowe's house recently. It was on the front page of the paper. Um, very, very touching picture. Uh, and with the with the board's approval, the if I can get a motion, because of some um, health issues that Mr. Rowe is facing, I would like to uh, waive the um, time period. We should vote on this in September, but if with the board's pleasure, um, I would like to go ahead and, and vote on this item this evening, if we could away. please. Wave of the policy. Okay, and the motion and the second with, that we waive the policy and name the music building at Conroe High School um, after Mr. Ralph Rowe. Any comments or discussions? Uh, I just want to comment. I think I know they were planning on being here. There are several his, of his former students here. Would you all mind standing so that we can recognize you? <laughs> Thank you so, so much for coming. Um, and if there aren't any other questions or comments, we'll take a vote. And um, for Dr. Brown this evening, we're going to do voice votes, Sparrows. So um, all in favor, if you would say aye. 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 All opposed, no. I'd like to abstain. Motion carries, and uh, we are delighted to have this music building um, have Mr. Rowe's name on it. He is a sweetheart. Yes. We vote to move. Wait. First. I put it all in one motion. Oh, okay. It's all in one motion. Yeah. Is that okay? It's, it's fine place. with me. You're the president. Okay. Motion. Can I add, too, that um, first of all, thank you for coming tonight. I, I know uh, Conroe High School is planning on um, having a ceremony that they'll announce in the near future. And we will also. Um, have for Mr. Rowe and his family a nice uh, plaque that, that uh, signifies this honor. Yeah. Thank you. Um, item 5B, Dr. Stockton. 5B is for the uh, approval of the GMP for San Jacinto Elementary School. Uh, Mr. Burns is, is here tonight. Oh, and uh, Mr. Burns, before you start, 
you kind of uh, sneak something in on us as uh, board members, and we didn't get to officially say um, congratulations and best wishes on your recent marriage. Thank you. Appreciate that. No. <laughs> I'd like to comment, I didn't have any cake. <laughs> I didn't either. Okay. <laughs> All right. You didn't know. Uh, uh, we're, <clears throat> excuse me. We're asking the board to approve the uh, GMP submitted by Brookstone Construction in the amount of $8,771,170,000. $170,000. Um, this will provide for a, um, this is a rendering of the front of the building. Uh, this is coming around the, the new, uh, drive queuing lane to get the cars off 1314 oh. a little safety uh, issue there this is a kind of a site plan which also includes clearing the playground uh, further to the north because we're going to be taking up some of the existing playgrounds so all the existing playground have to be relocated and a little bit more of the area cleared uh, this is a floor plan <clears throat> a proposed uh, building uh, addition it's a 17 new classrooms the area in blue uh, is some renovated areas um, it would be a total of 17 new plus about two to three more spaces plus a new library. So now the 800, the 8B771 also includes the campus improvements that were approved uh, in the 2008 bond referendum. What we're trying to do is when we hit a campus, whether addition or whatever, we're trying to pick up all the campus improvements at one time so we don't disrupt the campus at one time and not come back next year uh, and disrupt them again. We did a uh, similar type project at Armstrong. We're doing a lot of different things at one time. So uh, we're asking the board uh, for that approval tonight. Bobby, could you go back one slide, please? I just wanted to elaborate a little bit more. The uh, FM 1314, as you know, um, we've had some concerns about the traffic on that. So I, I just want to come in. I know Chris Hines was instrumental in this to the design of the, of the drive to get people um, to the best of our ability off 1314, that gives a large queuing area, which we think is really important. I have one question about the cafeteria. Could you explain again how many it'll seat, uh, how many lunches it will take to get done, and how many lunches do our normal, do most of our, there's, there's no such thing as normal when you have 50 campuses, but. Uh, at normal elementary lunch periods, are there three or four or eight or whatever? Typically, uh, and I'll let Kathy Gibson or Jean jump in if they need to, but typically your elementaries have five lunches, maybe six. Um, they all run around the same times. The uh, cafeteria at San Jacinto, I believe, has a capacity for 280 kids, 280 students. Um, so that'll give you an idea. They run five lunches. They start at 11.05 and end at 12.40. The, um, they have capacity now to put more kids in the lunches, uh, but the five is seems to be typical for the elementaries. So they have four lunches at this point? They have they have five lunches because they do some overlapping, I believe. Okay. But with the, oh, I'm sorry, John. And we're increasing by how many kids? Oh. Capacity currently is 500, and the capacity will be 850. So and we're, we're increasing by 350 kids. Right. And we ha already have five lunches. We have five lunches. And and so that's 70 kids per lunch. We have, we 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 have, uh, they have five lunch periods. That's by their choice. They can have more if they want. Sure. Okay. Um, we have campuses that of similar size that have similar cafeteria capacity uh, the capacity of the caf of the cafeteria is meets all TEA regulations um, uh, she begins her lunch period at 1110 she finishes at uh, 1240 that is comparable to uh, many of our other campuses um, so so uh, basically what I'm here to understand is Y'all are recommending it without the office. Well, you know, it's the if you add the additional space, it's it's not going to allow them. Um, it's it's not going to impact their lunches because they choose to have five lunches uh, based on the grade levels. Um, what it would do is give it would give kids more room 
during PE to, to play, and that's, you know, that we certainly have a value on that. Well, um, my question is, with that, has to do with all the additional requirements for physical education, would that, would the, uh, not using the uh, multi-purpose thing for serving meals, would that not uh, enhance our ability, capability of addressing the PE issue that we've got? If we weren't uh, serving lunch in this facility? Yeah, if we weren't serving lunch there, we could. Oh, yes, yes. But the additional space is yeah. not an additional lunch space. It's it's additional space in the lunch room. Um, so the benefit would be in the PE. Okay. okay. And I had misunderstood. I thought if we expanded the um, cafeteria that they would be able to start lunch later. But they were always, uh, rather than starting at 10, uh, 30, but they were always starting at 11, 10. Right. Well, it really doesn't impact the lunch yeah. when we start. Most the lunch. of our campuses begin at eleven. Well, that's what I thought. But Most I thought for some reason it's... this campus started at ten forty. Pardon me. For some reason, I thought this campus no, was this, saying this campus earlier. is not. In, uh, you know, it varies. Some start at eleven. Some some start at eleven oh five. They they all have a slightly different um, approach to it, depending on the number of students. Uh, and the number of grade levels at some of our schools, but um, it, it, and at the end of the day, it is currently comparable to our schools that are out there. Okay. Am I misunderstanding? But do don't our other schools have more interior? For example, in the new Sam Houston, they have their own yes. gymnasium. Yes. In, yes. And my point is, if you it, uh, and I'm probably as conservative as they get, I don't want to spend a half million dollars that we don't or five fifty that we don't need to spend. But frankly, if you're going to make this is a cheap new cheaper than building a new campus in that area, and if you're going to increase virtually doubling the size of the campus, then if the lunch, even if it stays in the same period with the new PE requirements, I think you're. I mean, apples to apples, it's not there because I've been in that lunch room and it doesn't compare with um, the new Ben Milan. I mean, it just doesn't compare. There's we have no we have new the new schools have a separate gymnasium. That's absolutely yeah. correct. Why why are we why are you recommend? Let's hear the other side. Why are you recommending uh, this without the altern alternate? Because of the fact that they have capacity in their lunchroom to eat, um, and it's comparable oh. to other other campuses. But I will say that there's also some benefit to having more PE space too. Um, but but, but as compared to other, no, other with, campuses that aren't the new campuses with a separate. With all due respect, how can you say it's comparable other than lunch area room wise if they don't have a standalone gym? Well, it's comparable to the other schools that don't have a standalone gym. That aren't as new. But I don't know the number of those. No. Sure, there, there's a good comparison. Okay. My real question is not about lunch. My real question is about the other purposes for the room or the lack of having another room for the other purposes, whichever way you want to look at it. And I, and I would tell you that. Well, and I agree, we, we, we can't do them all at once, but when we're at the campus, right. I, yeah. what was a million dollar gym becomes 550, or I, I don't know what the number is, maybe it's only 650 if we send a crew back out there. But with the new requirements and so on and so forth, I just don't want us, I am in for saving the 550 if, if administration thinks so. 
I just don't want to have to send a crew back out there two, two years, years from now because they say we're not right. getting our PE well, in. And, and the other, if the newer schools are having that space, why would we not do it at this school when we're there? Well, we have other schools that it's almost like we have two groups. We have groups of schools yeah, that yeah. use the cafeteria. That's what has but, been the practice in many years. But you have to start but, somewhere, you know, I think that, is the point. That, yeah. that are the new schools. But I think the point is and we, and we just went through the we just went through where the principals and administration went through each and every campus. Did we not, Mr. Burns? And they decided what their what their needs. what their needs list was or their wants as it may be. And I'm not sure where this fell, this issue fell, but if if it's cheaper to enlarge the cafeteria than it is to build a standalone gym while we're there, and need is a, a relative thing. I, I, well, that, I let, can, me, let me jump back in. You know, that's why if we're, you know, and our recommendation is to, um, was to keep the original recommendation, I guess. This would be redundant. But... And that's based on cafeteria space, having enough room for the kids, and we have that. Now, there is value in having a larger PE place. And there's value on that, well, and that, that's and something that, certainly. Well, the, we turn it down if you've approved it? Well, no. Well, no the other see, thing. I mean, I see it same I'm Houston. I see it. Yeah, right. we see. But but the other thing. Um, I mean, you need to understand how. Right. Yeah. But the other thing, Mr. Cox, with the Thank growth you, of Cox. our district, and the number. I mean, if we're going to add twenty thousand more students, we've got to add all these other campuses. Uh, I just hate to see us. Uh, and we've got to start somewhere. We can't do every campus at the. I mean, while we're in there, we might. To me, it makes sense to accommodate that. If we've got to meet all these new requirements, and uh, then let's pinch some pennies somewhere and. Uh, do this while while we're there, so that we're I'm not saving. We can't five thousand. <clears throat> yeah, but you can't go across. Right. Right. So we have a recommendation and an alternative before you. So, right. so do I have a motion for the recommendation, either as is or as? Alternate number one states. I move Makes sense. It. I move it, including the alternate. Okay. We have a motion to include alternate one, which is the expansion of the cafeteria at Sandra Senate, as an additional cost to the GMP. I would second that. Okay, I have a second. Any other comments or discussion? I have a question. Yes, if I may. I'd like to hear from Mr. Cox. Uh, half a million dollars, where is it going to come from if it's not in? Uh, well, you know, obviously, I can't stand here today and tell you what every yeah. project in the in the 2008 bond referendum is going to end up costing. We've been lucky. We've been pleased so far because we were we have been concerned about construction costs, and and the early projects we've bid we've come out okay on. Uh, if that trend continues, we clearly are, have contingency and. Uh, what is the contingency? Oh, it's I can't tell you. It's substantial. Yeah, I mean, we have we we have uh, uh, adequate funds. You'll recall in the last bond referendum we added 61 rooms uh, across the district, and we're able to do that uh, that were not budgeted. So clearly, we have the unless we run into some uh, problems, we have the ability to do things here and there. But I think. You need, you need to do it with caution, knowing that this is early in the process, and if we do this on a regular basis, we could get ourselves in trouble. I don't see a half a million dollars at this point being a problem, okay. but if we were to do this on every, you know, regularly, it could become a problem. And I think you'll see too. In a, in a minute, you'll see a GMP that uh, that, that came right. in under. Yeah. So, you know. Any other questions, comments? Okay, we'll take a vote. All in favor of um, the GMP with the addition of the alternate one for the expansion of the cafeteria at San Jacinto Elementary, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Dr. Stockton? 
Item C is the GMP for College Park High School addition and renovations and the district police facility and campus improvements at Knox Junior High School. Mr. Burns. Um, we're asking the board to approve the GMP as submitted by Marshall Construction Company in the amount of $23,624,140. Uh, this will include a, a new 92,000 square foot addition to the uh, College Park. It will include a new gym, uh, five science classrooms, uh, 15 general purpose classrooms, drama, wrestling, and weight room expansion. Uh, also in its bed, it includes all the campus improvements. It was 100 at the 208 bond for 1.6 million for Knox Junior High, and a new police station that was in the bond referendum of approximately 14,000 square feet, which will be built on the um, 186-acre site. Now, this particular bid, as Dr. Stocks mentioned, came in below budget. And we're able to, at this time, uh, bring on the police station and the Knox uh, onto this project and still stay within budget. Uh, would you explain how, um, well, two why things, you think it came in under well, budget? Well, two things have happened. Uh, Marshall, who was the contractor on York Junior High, Tom Coffin, <laughs> and now building Flex 11, has a group, of, a team of uh, subcontractors and suppliers uh, that he wants to maintain they work very hard, with Mr. Marshall, to bring in the good prices. They know that junior high, which they will be building in another year, uh, will be starting a lawnmower. So they're going to kind of follow the same same group all the way through. So they're giving you some price breaks. Um, during the design, um, when we were doing conceptual bond planning, um, I've had this thing originally at 105,000 square feet. Can come in at 92 by working with administrators on site and PBK designers, they were able to realign a few things, save some square footage, which also helped save some of the costs. But between the two, uh, Marshall probably being the largest, uh, we've uh, picked up about a $4 million plus. And by bringing these projects forward now, we're going to save a possible inflate, construction inflation further down the line on these, on these other projects. I have a question, Mr. Burns. Yes. Um, can you estimate uh, how much it will cost yes, if we were to consider building a ninth grade campus for College Park? Well, it's about the same thing as a junior high school, very similar. Which is what? About $22 million. $22 million? And, ha and how much of this approval is the College Park edition? Mm -hmm. uh, $19 million, uh, 250000 so, so nineteen million for this improvement. I think the numbers that he's giving you are, are these just are the construction costs. You need to add another six million or so on top of for, that for the land, land. For the land okay. furnishings, right. and everything else. So, okay. it, what's twenty-six million is really thirty-two million. Okay. Right. But this land we already have, right? Or not? Uh, so you're talking about, you're talking about, oh, okay, okay. But, I'm sorry. And the same token, uh, the addition to College Park does not have the furnishings in, in this number. No, that it does not. Yeah. I mean, it right, is so just the full Yeah, it's going to go up. Well. Well. Yeah. 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 My question yeah. is, 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 I know it would cost more, but why is it a good thing for four of our campuses to have a ninth grade Four well, I don't, I don't think that's an issue for Mr. Burns, to be honest with you. Uh, well, it, it was, I understand, but uh, it is an issue before I vote approval for this. Yeah, the uh, the issue, when, going back to the planning committee, was we need a capacity for about 600 kids, roughly. Um, <clears throat> so that's where um, that's where the addition came to for, for uh, College Park. Um, during the planning process, the, uh, the the facility planning committee looked at ideas, and we didn't talk necessarily about a ninth grade campus because we've traditionally looked at ninth grade campuses when our schools got three thousand kids or so. Um, for instance, we don't have a ninth grade campus at Moorhead or at, at Caney Creek. Um, would we have one additionally, uh, eventually, maybe if we grow and grow and grow? Um, so that, that's that's where we are today. The, the ninth grade campus issue. Um, I can tell you, the folks at College Park are very excited about this potential addition. Uh, let me ask you this: uh, How many, roughly, how many kids do we have in the freshman class at uh, College Park? Uh, 
Six hundred. Someone say six hundred. Yeah, it's six. Six fifty. So the school capacity right now for fall two thousand and eight is what? Twenty five. From now, probably. Tw what'd you say, Chris? Oh, Twenty two. Oh, I thought it was 24. Yeah. Okay. We have 26 in enrollment for the fall. Projected Project enrollment that. for the fall. And the capacity is 2,200, did you say? Uh, well, let me ask a question that's been asked of me and I, uh, so I can get a public answer. Uh, for is, you know, we moved the uh, academy from Oak Ridge over there because we had space. Uh, what would happen if we, I mean, I, and I don't even know whether we have another place, Spark, but, I mean, how how much is the academy impacting that uh, uh, population there? If the academy wasn't in, basically, if the academy wasn't in there, would we have enough space without any addition? Okay, but if you put the academy somewhere else, some of those kids from College Park would be going somewhere else. So how many are in the academy? So 80 college, so it's roughly 200, would you say 150 of it? Yeah. Okay. So that wouldn't. My, yes. my, my question is this, okay, we built a 2,500 student high school, so maybe it's 24, maybe it's 26 without portables. I'll go with whatever the number is y'all want to go with. But now we turn around and spend money to en enlarge it. And albeit we didn't know, how, we never know about growth and so on and so forth, but fundamentally we believe in the concept of separating ninth grader. Uh, we have to, or we would have added on to Woodlands, would have added on to Conroe High School. And I, I kind of disagree. We, in effect, moved the junior high at, at Caney Creek to basically make Moorhead, which, albeit attached, a, a separate campus. Now, they're not dividing yet this year. Is that correct? But eventually, as they grow, I just want to understand why it should be different at this school. If it's If it's money versus the right thing to do, or is it, is it six one way, half a dozen of another? Well, I, my, my answer would be it's, you know, I think there's benefits to having a ninth grade campus. I think there's benefits to having a ninth grade on the campus. Uh, it depends on how it's set up. Um, I think when you get larger campuses, there's definite benefit to have ninth grade off the campus. Um, you, know, you know, you can go either way on that. I think the issue with this building is we had a, a functional capacity of about 2,200. And we have 2,600 kids there, and we're going to add a couple hundred more kids there. So what do you do with that smaller group of kids? Um, you know, does it, does it, it, would it even support a ninth grade campus? Um, and then the issue of, of where would you put that ninth grade campus? Lots of issues that just weren't, people weren't talking about those types of issues. Uh, but they were talking about having room for the kids that are there um, and having the support facility within that. I have... A question on, on the same for College Park, if I, I recall, it's uh, very compact and uh, very small um, acreage. Where would all of this addition uh, go? Is like a, uh -oh. a, a parking uh -oh. or a play field, things like that? Addition, but most of there's a green uh, area to the east. I'm sorry? The park line in the building is a grass area. Most of the gymnasium, which is one of the largest pieces, sits right there. I think it's parking space. It's a two-story structure. All the cars all line up. Very, there'll be some impact in the back in that grass here. Very little impact. Was it the last last month that the board saw the? Yeah, I'm I'm trying to remember. Yeah. I, behind, I apologize. Behind the um, commons, commons area. area. Commons area. As you walk in the front, yeah. the commons area in yes, the sir. back, and yes, those, sir, yeah, okay. We're not, we're not impacting too much of the drives or the park. <laughs> Most of it's within the compound to the back. How many stores would be two, two, three? Three, two, two. Doctor, one last question now. On, uh, when Pete converts to a ninth grade campus and we yes. build a new junior high, yes. 
uh, what is the capacity as a ninth grade campus at, at Pete? Oh, Will it change any from the junior high to we, that level? It may change a little bit because we go into renovation and, and do some things with the science rooms. But, but roughly? Roughly, it was a little bit of that, but something. And, and how many freshmen are we expecting to have the year that opens from Conroe High without a rezone? So, so there, there is, is not room for a rezone in any way, form, or fashion to correct this issue. I mean, I mean, because you know, because Conroe's growing. Also, I realize that, but I, I mean, from a ninth grade campus standpoint, it not, couldn't not take some of the space. Very good. You've answered my question. Thank you, sir. Any other questions or comments? I, I just think that uh, with the success that we've had with ninth grade campuses, um, having the freshmen have their own campus, I, I think has been, from an emotional standpoint, from a maturity standpoint, I think it, it's, it's been a winner for us. I mean, really, uh, back when we were even considering this, we noticed that freshmen were having emotional problems, maturity problems, even suicide. Uh, so, Well, let me... Uh, I'm playing both sides of this thing, so let me raise a couple more questions. One, do we have enough students, freshman students, for an grade campus? And then the second issue that uh, I know when you build a, a jail or a detention center, uh, you recapture, I mean, what, what you spend on the building, you spend again within five years on operational costs uh, because you've got, you're adding a, principal, you're adding assistant principals and those kind of things. Uh, so, uh, you know, how much more are we talking about to spend to get a ninth grade campus for student versus the issue of uh, expanding? Now, I know I'm jumping back and forth because I'm uh, kind of unsure myself how I'm going on, on this. One thing that you made it clear to me in our discussions here today is that the size of the woodlands in Conroe and Oak Ridge specifically dictate separating one of the grades, whereas a 600 increase at College Park does not make it unmanageable. Is that a correct statement? Whether it's a good thing or a bad thing to have the ninth graders there, the size of that campus for the administrative team, plus or minus the new teachers required or maybe one new assistant principal, it doesn't change the capacity. But when you go from four to 5,000 kids, that becomes a whole nother event. I think that's fine. And, and 600 more added to 2,200 more is 28, and that's still way smaller than our other campuses. So that's why it can work there. And how that, many, Is that what I'm understanding you to say? Exactly One more time, how many freshmen would there be at? 600. 600. 600. Well, okay. So which would be about half What are you projecting in pieces? two or three years as far as an incoming freshman? So it stays pretty consistent. I think our projections go out to 28 something. Well, you had, uh, if I may, Sir, uh, Dr. Stockton said something about uh, the um, staff, faculty at uh, College Park. We're very excited. Uh, would you um, hear that? Well, I, th I think the, the feedback, and I've talked to Mr. Merle about this um, on a couple different occasions, uh, and I gave all the bond presentations um, you can imagine, and uh, heard heard nothing about anything like a ninth grade campus. Uh, I think people like to be there. Um, I, I think the folks are real excited. I think the voters. We're excited about the proposal. The question I would get, that I got was, uh, hey, we just built a new school. Why are we adding on to it? And, and I talked about the growth, and that's the last question I would get about it. Um, but I think I think if the faculty was here, they'd be very excited. And if, of course, part of that is because the school's been so successful, and then kids <laughs> like to be there and everything. Um, but I do think with the numbers, 2,800 or, or those numbers they're about, they can do some things for freshmen and address Mr. Iron's concern. And but Mr. Husbands is right. When you get to a certain mass, it's very difficult to do that. Uh, but, 
I have one other. So the size of uh, the acreage at College Park is much smaller than the other campuses. It's not that, not a fair statement. Yes, it is. So by adding on it uh, for parking for things like that, it's going to increase in students. Um, what what what? How does that play out? Well, mo most of the most of the part we're going to build on right now is behind that the building. Uh, yeah. It's going to impact some of the parking. Um, so, but I think I think as far as ratio is concerned, they still look pretty good from a ratio standpoint. So I, I don't have that information. Yeah, no, I know. Just... But we were surprised when we looked at it as far as the impact it's going to have on uh, pleasantly surprised on the rest of the area. The motion has been made that we approve the GMP for College Park, the District Police Facility, and the Campus Improvements at Knox. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any other comments or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. No. Um, Dr. Stockton, uh, item D. Our next GMP is Conroe High School edition. Uh, Ms. Burns. Okay. We're asking the board to approve the uh, the bid that's submitted by Ellisor Constructors in the amount of twelve million three hundred thousand dollars for the additions or renovation for Conroe High School. <clears throat> uh, this will include a new front entry, a new uh, connecting link between the two gyms with lobby. Uh, renovate the auditorium entirely, including sound system, curtain, and lighting systems. Uh, will include repainting and reflooring of the main building and the annex across the street. Any any changes in the project scope of the project? Because you you went over the basics, but there were several other things in there. Oh yes, uh, we, we're putting in new doors in the, in the main. No building. no no, anything taken out. That, that was my only my, my only reason for asking that versus the other projects is fifteen six to twelve three is pretty good, Bobby. Doing a great job. Well, there was nothing taken out of Conwell High School. In fact, uh, this uh, we've already if you remember the board approved a GMP to Ellisor uh, about a month or so ago a month ago for some uh, for about two hundred thousand dollars to do some paving over Conwell High, uh, which is now complete. Uh, we're waiting for quit rain so we can stripe it. That was part of the original budget for the Conroe High Campus Improvements. Move there were 58 approval. items on campus improvements for Conroe High. Second. Th this number includes the 58 items in the box. And that included the auditorium? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, what, one of the things Bobby shared with me when he made his estimate on this one, there were so many little parts that it was, he was a little wanted to be safe on his estimate. Is that <laughs> And I, I, I apologize, I haven't looked at the, the inside, but when we refigure that front, then that's going to be a more secure yes, entry there, because right now it's... Be totally secure. Okay. You'll, you'll Great. have a set of gates right there by the auditorium door, so they okay. can't get the ground moving reception out in, basically in that lobby. In that lobby. So <laughs> that person or persons will be able to see both directions at any time. Yes, I made a motion. Okay, I, I have a motion second. for the seconded. Second. Motion and a second to approve the GMP for Conroe High School edition. Um, we any other find comments something or wrong questions? with this since we have what they're playing out. I mean, it's not. <laughs> well, probably wouldn't. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, All opposed, no. Motion carries unanimously. I will make a comment while we're talking about that. We, uh, in, in about a week, you'll see fencing up in front because we've got to do a construction area and, and Mr. Crowell and his administration are they're working with and Ms. Drummond are working with um, the parents and teachers and everybody to train them where to go because we're going to start the school year and then after about three days, four days, we're going to redirect them to come in a different area. We're going to move the front office. Uh, it's going to be a beautiful building. It's going to be a, you know, a year Nightmare. with lots of stuff going on in front. I think it's going to be well worth it. <clears throat> Okay, um, 5F? 5E. 5E. 5E is the approval of the GMP for Tough and Dirch and Elementary Editions. Uh, the board <laughs> asked us to take another look at this, and, and we have uh, continued to run the numbers. The, the challenge with this 
um, area, specifically Dirichen, is we continue to get growth and we're not sure, based on anybody's report, on where we are with hitting the, the peak number. Um, the, the bond issue had originally eight classrooms in it. We, we threw the idea out to put 12 classrooms at, at both and try to avoid um, uh, rezoning. We, we're not confident we can do that because the, because we still may have to do, even if we had 12 classrooms, we still may have to do some rezoning at Dirichen. Um, so with that in mind, uh, and we do have some space at Galatis um, uh, that we could utilize uh, with some rezoning. With that in mind, we're going to bring back the original eight classroom additions that were on the um, on the bond issue. We have our principals here that are kind enough to be here tonight. And um, then if that's approved, Dr. Stewart and her team will work on the rezoning process, as, as you know. And I think Ms. Haynes suggested several years ago, to lots of input, and we've been doing that. And um, she'll start that process in September uh, if this is approved. Second. The motion is second that we approve the GMP for Coastal Cup and Derrickson Elementary. Any comments or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries unanimous. Item 5F. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Thank uh, you. 5F. No giggling in the back. <laughs> 5F is uh, the bond referendum update, and, and I'll make note that tonight you'll see a 2004 bond referendum for the update for the last time. It's a milestone, so it burns. Uh, York Junior High, which is now uh, complete. This is the front of the building. Uh, this is the uh, the library, the commons area, the Senate District uh, Tech Labs. Uh, Tom Cox uh, Intermediate. Uh, Bobby, I'm sorry, I'm just catching up. Would you go back a couple slides? <laughs> I can't let I can't let this pass. Okay. <laughs> I figured you couldn't. I don't know if you noticed, but one of the jokes is people are calling it the New York, and I said it's New not York. called New York. <laughs> and you sure enough, we got a New York sign. New York there. sign. <laughs> so we are not going to have a new and an old. Okay. Not like a new Anderson or old Anderson. <laughs> okay. Tom Cox Intermediate. Uh, is now complete. It's all charged up and ready to go. Happy campers here. Uh, this is some of the murals that have uh, been painted on the bell. And I don't want to interject. I, uh, at Tom Cox, um, the, the building's just beautiful. It's like it's all like our other flex schools. Um, Ken Sharples is the principal there, and he just has done an amazing job coordinating along with Mr. Cox and, and his art teacher, Mr. McDonald, Wayne McDonald. Wayne's painted all these. You're going to see several murals that are just incredible. Um, they've spent their summer up there. I went up there one fact in San Storch there. I went up there one summer, and, and Ken had 10 volunteers painting signs. I mean, it's just been he great. He did that at Vogel, too. He did. Did he not? He did. Yeah, it's just, it's just incredible. <laughs> Pardon me. Can I ask, what is the uh, mascot for Cox that we approved? Timberwolves. Timberwolves. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to get there with coyotes. coyotes. It just wasn't working. For me. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I was in the same genre. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, this is the commons area. And again, that's another thing that was painted on there. There you oh, go. Wow. Oh, Beating wow. the pack. Library. Sports complex uh, is uh, the dedication is, uh, this Sunday. They've been putting that one in. Who's got in the pool? Who got in the pool? Who got in the pool? Who got in the pool before me? I haven't been in it. Okay. Who are those people? That's, I think that's Mr. Burns, Mr. Bollinger. That's the full set of taxes. I think Dr. Stewart. They don't have life jackets on. It can't be them. <laughs> when did they start practicing? Right now? They start the first week of September, I believe. They've been doing some lifeguard uh, work down there the last few days. Uh, but the building is uh, very attractive and be ready for the uh, <coughs> dedication um, on Sunday. I think we can get the next Olympics there. <laughs> I don't know, I hope so. Bobby, if you could go back. Um, I asked him to put the scoreboard. The scoreboards are up, and, and, just, and the board knows this, but 
we have entered in an agreement with Dectronics um, with our sponsorship that we've been able to put scoreboards at both Moorhead Stadium, at Wood Forest Bank Stadium, and two in the Natatorium and provide a great uh, additional level of entertainment for our spectators. And the beauty of it is it's no cost to our taxpayers. This is all by sponsor money. In fact, it, uh, the sales went so well that the district will uh, receive approximately $100,000 in revenue per year in addition to getting scoreboards. It's just been an incredible deal. It's the biggest one Dectronics has ever done with high school. Uh, so we're very excited about it. You know, we could put some more signs along the bottom of that at that rate. Well, I am going to wear a NASCAR jacket with just patches. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is a looking out through the press box on the blue field. <coughs> That's scoreboard. Oh, Armstrong. Armstrong. Can you back up just one? Well, Ms. Burns, I know you've been standing up there a long time. It's okay. You're going quick. We just wanted to admire all our sponsors. And I, I will share with you, too, you may have been up to Moorhead Stadium. Uh, Moorhead Stadium also has uh, Connell Regional Medical Center on their on their school. Board. Thank you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Armstrong Elementary, uh, we're still uh, working to get this one together. It's going to be down to the wire. But there was a lot of work that went on in this building uh, during the summer. Uh, which include uh, like new fire new sprinkler place, system, new uh, ceiling. That's just uh, unbelievable. Uh, we, we couldn't take a, a real good picture of the cafeteria because of, we have a lot of furniture stored in there, which will be stored and being dispersed uh, tomorrow to the classrooms. Uh, if you remember, the uh, this used to have the green tile on the walls in an old mm -hmm. casework, some bunch of old casework right there with all mm -hmm. been cleaned up. Oh, uh, this is the cafeteria kind of looking over the furniture. But this is the cafeteria, buddy. <laughs> this looks great. Look at it. <laughs> great. But it will come together. This is the library that they're putting in the countertops today, actually, in the carpet. It was finished up last night or this morning. Excuse me. Uh, this is the new classroom wing. Uh, it will be open on Monday. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, are you moving, um, Mr. Your Sunday? Sir? Monday morning. Or, uh, Monday morning? Monday morning. Because I know he's the. I called him to see if I could get a tour, and he doesn't have his new office out there. And I was wondering if it. It's going to, we, we are very fortunate um, to not only have our planning and construction department does an incredible job, but we have got a custodial department that is so customer friendly. We've got teams ready to go Thursday, just teams of custodians, and they're going to work until it's ready to go. They do, they do a yeoman's job on these buildings, particularly when we're running a little bit behind or, or we'll be, like during the summertime, we may be doing seven to eight bells where we're repainting and flooring. Those bells have to be emptied and then brought back. So they do a tremendous job every year with their kind of behind the scenes, but they're there without them there. Okay, Flex 11, which actually would be the first part of the 2008 bond, still part of 04, but we're gonna call it 2008. Uh, it's about 10% complete. Uh, underground is in. Slabs are being poured, slowed down the last week by rain. This is our bonus school. That's the bonus school. Flex 12, which is the intermediate on the 186 site. Uh, those large culverts are the underground infrastructure storm lines for the entire uh, site, which, be part of this, which is part of this contract. Uh, the pad for Flex 12 is in place. The plumbing is going in. Uh, Flex 14, uh, which is not part of this, uh, they are storing the pad on it and um, as far as dirt only and infrastructure. So for all, all the storm drains will be all tied together. Flex 13 and Pearl Oaks, um, they're storing their beams up here. We've been done. Uh, they're hampered by mud right now. See? Uh, Runyon. Oh, this was, was now complete. I don't know if you remember, but all these corridor walls were kind of a green color. Mm -hmm. uh, if you remember, the restrooms were probably not showpieces. Uh, they're a little bit better now. Uh, this is the office area. Uh, just looking down one of the corridors, the new doors. And that's it. Any questions? Very nice and work. Job. Right. A very, very busy summer for planning and construction also. Thank you so Appreciate much. It. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Burns. We'll move to item agenda six, business and finance. Um, item A, Dr. Talkin. Uh, Mr. Cox is going to come and present the 2008-2009 official school budget. President Sasser, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, uh, I recommend that the Board of Trustees uh, approve the adopt the resolution explaining the intent to fall short of proposed expenditure target established by the Commissioner of Education and approve the 2008-2009 official school budget. As you know, we achieve excellent academic outcomes in a very cost-effective manner. However, we are not going to spend 65% of our budget on instruction, which is the target uh, set this year uh, that we all heard about for some time. And this is the first year that they've set the target that you uh, should achieve that 65% spending on instruction. Uh, <clears throat> the resolution explains that the budget uh, will not achieve the 65% target. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think that's any surprise. I still think we're doing a good job. I think most districts I've seen are adopting this, this resolution. Uh, I recommend uh, that you adopt the resolution and approve the budget. So moved. Second. Motion to made and seconded that we adopt the um, board resolution and also the 2008-2009 official school budget. Any questions or comments? I'd like to make a comment. Uh, uh, it has to do with the arbitrary 65%, and I'd like to be on record and say, you know, unless they do something with transportation in those other areas, that we are so different about that we have to haul so many kids. So many. if you don't get the kids there, you can't educate them. And I think we need to uh, kick that statement over to the uh, our legislative uh, committee and keep sending that message to uh, the House and the Senate about, you know, these arbitrary numbers can't do it if we can't get the kids there. So I mean. I'll put three. Other questions or comments? Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, before we move on to the next item, I'd like to uh, personally thank Darren Rice and the Stowers who are here tonight. We really did the work to put this budget together. That's fine if you do that, but just don't go through the budget presentation one more time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I will not do that. I can give. Okay. Um, item agenda um, 6B, Dr. Stockton. 6B is the 2008-2009 tax rate. I recommend the Board of Trustees adopt a tax rate of $1.04 for maintenance and operations and 23 cents for debt service per $100 of taxable valuation to fund the 2008-2009 official school budget. Uh, the tax rate is required to fund the maintenance and operations and the debt service budgets for 2008-2009. Uh, the resolution is attached and I recommend that uh, it be approved. So moved. Second. Motion been made and seconded that we adopt the tax rate as presented by um, Mr. Cox, questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries unanimously. Dr. Stockton, item 6C. 6C is the revisions to the 457 plan, Mr. Cox. Yes, I recommend that the Board of Trustees approve the following changes to the 457 plan. Appoint First Financial Administrators, Inc., FFA, as the third party administrators. Uh, for the existing 457 plan. Replace the existing 457 plan document with the attached 457 Deferred Compensation Master Retirement Plan document provided by First Financial. Uh, add two life insurance company of the Southwest uh, annuity products called Secure Plus Elite and Millennium to the existing investment option. Appoint First Financial Administrators as the exclusive agent for any continuing existing 457 plan investment options and the two new LSW options listed above. And provide Fidelity Investments mutual funds as an additional investment option, which will not be administered by FFA, but will be dealt with directly with Fidelity. 
Um, this proposal was prepared by First Financial Administrators, Terry Brown, C.J. Haynes, and myself, and I recommend that it be approved. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded that we approve the following changes to the 457 plan. Any comments or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries unanimously. I want to thank Mr. Fox, Mr. Brown, and Ms. Haynes. Thank you very much for your input on this, and I think we have a good plan for our employees. I'd also thank like to much. introduce Mac Whiteman with FSA. He's here. He's uh, uh, one of the representatives from FSA. Uh, I told him if to help me if we get, if I got into trouble. trouble. But uh, I, since there were no questions, I want to. Introduce Okay. Thank you very much for coming this evening. Item 6, D. I too would like to thank Ms. Haynes for your work on 457. Appreciate that. Um, financial reports. Mr. President, Rice. since they've been working so hard on the budget and everything, I, 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 I agree. Think that, I agree. I agree. I think, I think that Mr. Rice needs a pass tonight. Yeah. Mr. Rice. <laughs> Should we thank you? Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> it wasn't near as good as your report. Well, wait, wait a minute. Get no back more up vacations. here. We haven't voted yet. <laughs> we don't have to vote. Thank you all very much for all your hard work. We, we appreciate it. Okay, we'll move on to the Human Resources Report, which is item um, seven, agenda item 7A. Do I hear a motion to approve? No, Second. Motion has been made and seconded that we approve the Human Resources Report. Questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. <laughs> Motion carries unanimously. And we'll move to uh, legal. Uh, Mrs. Gladys, authorized not uh, notice proposing termination of employment contract. Dr. Sasser, uh, Ms. Sasser, I'd like to withdraw actually both my items from the board's consideration this evening. Okay. Thank you. Then there being no other business, do I hear a motion to adjourn? No, 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 no. Oh, surely. Probably out of order, but I want to say a couple times. Um, first of all, I'd like to again uh, thank the facility planning committee. Those of you who hung around, that's you get extra. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, and you also, do it again. <laughs> and some of you also were involved in the past committee. And I noticed Rita Wilson is in the crowd. Rita, thank you for your support. Rita, thank mm -hmm. you for your support. I know you're involved in the past committee. Um, and I just want to say at the eve here of the start of the school year, um, and, and I, at our assembly on Thursday, everybody in our district will hear that I'm convinced the superintendent that we're ending the, the greatest year in our school district's history based on our academic performance, based on our financial performance, based on a lot of different factors. Um, but I think we're poised to have even a greater year next year. So with that, I just want to submit that to you. Thank you very much. We're excited and invite all of you to join us for this.